I was experiencing also uh, a lot of domestic violence at home. And my dad basically was an alcoholic. He used to hit my mom and, you know, uh, bad memories of that. When I uh, um, started in high school, I remember I met a, a boy. I told him, you know what, I, I want to go with you to the church. My first time in that church, I was amazed because I, I felt the presence of God there. It was real. And the first thing I asked God was, I want a miracle. I don't want my dad drinking anymore. And I was amazing after that because in that moment, my dad never got drunk again. Home. Wow. Amigos, bienvenidos. That means welcome to another episode of ChristianPodcast.com. We're so happy you're here. And guess what? Today is going to be an awesome episode. I'm from Mexico, from Guadalajara, Mexico. And today I'm going to be talking to a fellow Mexican who lives in Tucson, Arizona, and who happens to be a Christian rocker in spanish so we're gonna <laughs> learn his story we're gonna talk to him a little bit about his experience maybe even being here in the u.s about his travels about his findings as a christian is gonna be so epic so welcome to the show Oh, yeah. So we have Rodrigo Silva. And Rodrigo, I just want to say this before you know, we get deep dive into our talk today. We just had an episode in Spanish that we recorded because we are both like Spanish speaking, right? So that's yeah. a good advertisement for our other stream of the show, completely in Spanish, where I do episodes with my wife weekly. So you can find that on ChristianPodcast.com and then just click where it says in Espanol and you're gonna find like bus loads of episodes that we have in Spanish actually are our, our Spanish and you would figure right our Spanish show is growing even more than our English one it's growing quicker and rapidly one because my wife is with me in the show and second because it's our first language it's our mother language okay so if you want to check out our episode with our friend right here you can check it out christianpodcast.com en español. Rodrigo, how are you doing today? Welcome to the show. Hey, Beto, I'm pretty excited. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, <laughs> and thanks for yeah that Spanish show we had. Uh, I had an, ama an amazing time with you, with you guys. Awesome. Well, you know me. We're going to go to our yep. emoji tombola to choose the emoji <laughs> for today. Okay, so are you guys ready? Uh-oh, what is going to be the emoji that we have for today? Let's run the emoji tombola. And it's the inspired emoji. Inspired emoji to kick off the show. So fun. Okay, Rodrigo, what is the idea behind inspired emoji? Why do you feel inspired? <laughs> okay, well, uh, related to what I do, which is music, Um, in order to write songs, because I'm a singer or a songwriter, uh, it's necessary, it's essential to combine inspiration with uh, technique and methodology. Uh, of course, you not necessarily need inspiration in order to do songs, to write songs. Uh, you can use your skills, technique, methodology, and professionalism, professionalism but if you combine inspiration with it, you can uh, create something something very special in people's hearts. So that's mm. that's what I need, ins inspiration. Love it, to create something special in people's hearts. Man, that's profound right yeah. there. Love it. All right. So, Rodrigo, I mean, 
We were talking yesterday, and I even see you right now. You're wearing this shirt that says uh, Marley, and I'm assuming it's Bob Marley, yep. One Love, right there. It is. So you're a full-on musician. Like You have this passion for music. Yesterday, we were talking in Spanish about uh, a little bit of your journey living in the U.S., But also, I mean, your trajectory as a musician is pretty epic, you know, and uh, I had a few musicians here on the show here and then, but I think you're the <laughs> first Mexican musician other than myself, you know, <laughs> being on the show <laughs> where uh, your story is pretty epic. I mean, in a sense, it's almost like maybe not, I don't know if it's the American dream, but the musician dream, right? Like traveling, visiting other countries. And yeah. what is that being like for you, especially taking it from like from like a latino point of view right is is that any different maybe that like than the typical american who travels the world doing music and stuff like how is there anything to that to your own journey or just tell us about that journey of music well first and foremost uh i not only consider myself a musician but also uh a songwriter uh, a singer songwriter and um i consider myself also a music producer I mix music, so um, and now with all this technology, um, I'm starting doing my own my own mastering. So for me, it's been a pretty good experience. Um, you know, being a musician here in the states, uh, it's a it's a totally it's a total blessing. Uh, I've been totally blessed all these years because uh, we're in a country of opportunities. So um, and I think that people um, respect. Uh, what well, we do and of course in other countries when I was living in Mexico also I had pretty good experiences but when I got here uh, I grew up a lot and, and yeah I think uh, being traveling in diff to different places in the world uh, has opened a lot my, my eyes and, and, and the power you have through the music to touch the people to touch their hearts so it's been a pretty amazing experience Yes. So I want to know just so I mean, people are going to be listening from all over the place. And it's just inter like I was saying, you know, when you go to your website, you have I mean, you're playing in Lakewood Church in front of thousands of people. Right. And I don't know, for, for some people, mm -hmm. maybe maybe it's like, oh, I don't know, Latinos, their thing is a little bit smaller scale than you know, typical Anglo projections with music and stuff like that. But your journey has mm -hmm. been pretty amazing. So um Just in regards to that, I mean, what, maybe what are some of the, some of the, this is not just to throw like flowers, like we say in Mexico, right? Uh, because I'm, <laughs> exactly. I'm doing this with a purpose, but just to open up people's minds, like, just tell us some of the, like the achievements in a sense, if you may, that you have accomplished as a musician. Because I think those are pretty, I, I think it's pretty awesome to say, this is what God has granted me or the blessings that God has allowed me to live, right? Yeah, well, the achievements, uh, I've seen, the, the best thing for me is when people uh, come to you and tell you uh, what had happened in their life when they've been listening to your music. I remember a, a guy who once uh, came to me and told me, you know what, me and my wife w were almost to, to divorce and listening to your music, something change inside of me so i got inspired now that we're talking about the inspiring emoji <laughs> <laughs> i got inspired again and and we're still together so uh all those changes um that we can produce through the music is is something that keep me motivating uh, motivated on doing this and i've seen this in because i had the opportunity to travel to different places uh different countries like uh, uh central america south america i've been in a lot of cities in Mexico, here in the U.S. We've been in Canada, in Toronto, Montreal, uh, Vancouver, uh, in Spain. So, and I, I've seen all those, um, all those uh, testimonies from people. So that's, for me, that's a, the, the main achievements. Uh, and that keeps, uh, that's still my goal, to go and, and, and understand people's needs And yeah, that's why I'm, I keep doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is so interesting because you're, you're talking about like a very specific purpose when it comes to music, which is technically like you're saying inspire people. And 
Yeah. I think you're very focused when I hear your lyrics and they're in Spanish, right? And uh, I mean, do you have any in English yep. like where people can find your music in English or no? Yeah, I I wrote the song uh and actually that's my last uh, my my new single. Uh its name is Resilient uh, in Spanish uh, Resilientes. And that's 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 curious because uh that's the first song I I uh I wrote uh, in English. Uh mainly in English, I mean, because sometimes you, you write a song in, let's say in your main language, in my case, in Spanish, and then you translate the lyrics. But in this case, because I have two daughters, one, one is 12 and the other one is 10. And uh, the, the older one uh, came to me and she told me, you know, what? I like to sing a song. And I wrote the song because we were during the pandemic, uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. And she told me, I'd like to sing a song. She was, they're learning to play piano in different uh, um, disciplines. And when I wrote that song, I, I loved it a lot that, that I told her, you know what, it's going to be for me. I'm going to record it, not, not you. <laughs> she was like, okay. <laughs> and I recorded that song and we did a music video, which is amazing. And uh, yeah, I hope you can, you can, you like that song once you hear it. And it talks precisely about hope. Uh, because every one of us uh, need hope and we're in pretty difficult times and we're experiencing different changes in the world, um, in society, and we have to keep uh, resilient ourselves. We need to be strong uh, in order to overcome all the challenges in life. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's so cool. So in terms of your... Um Yeah, like this this writing, it's so interesting because like even yesterday we were talking about how you're a singer, songwriter, and you have this approach to music that is very poetic, right? Even your song, Resilientes or Resilient, like it's not, uh, even though you're a Christian, maybe it's not like a typical worship song, right? Where uh, you're mentioning God or you're <laughs> mentioning Jesus in, in every word. So that's so interesting. That's interesting. I, I, yeah. I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm sorry to interrupt, but that, that's that's funny because uh, one day a, a guy came to me and he told me, you know what, Rodrigo, I love your music because uh, when it, when it, when the people listen to it, it doesn't look like a Christian song, so I can raise the volume and nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> It's like subtle, right? But that's so powerful because yeah. you were saying like yesterday you said something like. Like, if I would sing a song to my wife, her name doesn't necessarily need to be in the song, right? And no, Gladys or exactly. Gladys or, or no, whatever your wife's name is. Like, people don't yeah, usually write Gladys. with their, you know, just repeating their name, even though there's songs like that, right? I mean, I don't know, Grace or whatever, whatever name it might be, which is awesome. But it, that just, out of curiosity, like, what do you witness here in the U.S.? Like, being, you said you've been here, what, like 20 years In the U.S.? Yes, 20 years, yeah. Okay, so 20, 20 years, years in the in U.S.? 2003. Wow. That, I mean, that's, that's, that's a long time, right? So in those years, yeah. like doing the type of music that you do, but then also witnessing maybe the type of music that we listen to here in the U.S. And, and I think even the 2000s were uh, uh, almost like a tiebreaker in the in the music industry, especially like the, the Christian music industry where most of the music maybe back then was a little bit like, and that would be kind of fun to, to know like what were your influences, if there were any. But let's say mm -hmm. most of the music, the Christian music was a little bit more like that, like poetic, not, not, not necessarily mentioning God in every sentence. So in a sense, not like worship music, But I think in the 2000s, something started happening where it was almost like everything shifted to, okay, now we do songs that we sing in church only, even though they're still rock songs. But, you know, we mention Jesus in every other sentence or we mention God or we praise him, which is awesome, right, that we have those type of songs. But I think it, it kind of pulled away from, from, from the songs that were a little bit more poetic or people were writing no, not necessarily for a congregation but just in sense reflecting mm -hmm. on God. Um, so, yeah, what have you witnessed in, in those 20 years here? Well, now that, that you're talking about, there's an expression in, in, in Spanish. Uh, I don't know how to translate it to English, but it says, poner el dedo en la llaga. How do you say it? How do you say like it? Like put, put the finger <laughs> on the wound? 
Uh, I think so. Well, <laughs> uh, and I'll do that right now because uh, the worship, of course, worship in music, worship music is necessary in church because we need to worship God. That's one of the ways we worship God. And I love that. Actually, I started uh, as a um, uh, worshiper, uh, worship, uh, doing worship at a church when I was 19. That, that was the first way I started in music. Well, not necessarily, but in Christian music. And when you see that there's a lot of worship music and not too many poetic music or like normal music giving a message to a message to people, because the worship music is like the the mainstream uh, in 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 the Christian world. Um, like in, in in the secular world, world, you can see that at the moment in the U.S. is pop pop music. If you do rock, it's like you. It's like you're a little bit out of fashion, right? And in Latin America, it's reggaeton. <laughs> <laughs> but in Christian music, the mainstream is is worship. So, um, but I've been doing this type of music, doing uh, writing like more poetic, poetic um, uh, lyrics since I started. Because I don't know, maybe it's because I'm my uh, personality. Maybe because I'm melancholic. Did I say right? Melancholic or introverted. So, um, but I do a lot of energetic music too, but there's always that element of poet, uh, poetry. And it's challenging because uh, sometimes you're not invited to all uh, the events in, in the Christian world. So sometimes you have to go, and that's the amazing thing for me, because I've been in a lot of uh, secular uh, events. And... I've been opening concerts like one day I was in, in, in Miami, Florida, in the American Airlines Arena, and I opened a concert for Alejandro Sanz. I, I don't know if people is related with that uh, singer. He's from Spain. So it was a, a huge sea of people there. Um, and I opened that concert singing my songs, and, and I had an, an amazing experience. So that type of doors have been opened to me doing this type of lyrics, this type of music. So the great thing of this is that uh, that's an opportunity to me uh, to share with uh, others uh, the gospel and to share the word of God. So. Wow. Yes. So do you think maybe some Christians here in the U.S. are taking the... Well, first, first, let's go to... Do you have any influences? Like for me, it would be back in my days, maybe like Michael W. Smith, <laughs> DC Talk, Jars of Clay, Switchfoot... Uh, what are some of, like, do you have any, like, Christian rock influences in a sense, like, American or otherwise? In the, in the, in the, in the Christian area, my, I remember listening to DC Talk. Do you remember Jesus Freak? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, I love that project. And P.O.D. Oh, okay. P.O.D. I don't know if they're still, yeah, I don't know if they're still play, uh, playing, but, yeah, but I used to listen a lot of rock of the 90s in Mexico, Caifanes, do you remember okay. Caifanes? Yes. Um, uh, 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 what's the name of this band? Phobia. A lot okay. of Mexican uh, bands, rock bands, and here in the US, and, and yeah, DC Talk, POD, Bob Marley, we, he's not Christian, but uh, you know, music is music. And I hear, I listen to a, a lot of music. I love classical music, and I do a lot of all those. Um, influences in my music and sometimes uh, I don't have an orchestra a whole orchestra to record uh, to put in my in my songs but you know synth synthesizers is a good help these days <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you need to hear you need to listen a lot of music in, in order to to create um, uh, different colors uh, in music and that way that's the way that people connect with you uh, that's the way that the people engage with you, and that's the opportunity to, uh, for them to hear the the, the lyrics. Mm -hmm. Wow! So you would say that. So you mentioned in regards to your own music, being mm -hmm. being basically different than worship, right? Um, you mentioned. Yeah, but but again, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, but again, uh, I started doing worship music. Sometimes I, I mean, in in events or in churches like. Yeah, and, and they they asked me if I could do the worship. Um, and of course, I love doing that. Actually, mm -hmm. 
it's part of our routine and habit here at home doing worship with my daughters and, and my wife so they're learning uh, doing that so actually my 12 years old and my 10 years old they're gonna start um in the, a church mm, as a part of the of the worship team in, in with the teenagers so and i'm pretty excited for that it's not that i that i reject that of course not it's part of my life but when i when i write music when i write uh songs for some reason i i i go that way mm -hmm. and so the cool thing is that it seems like when you write the the outlet is different than a church right so opening for alejandro sanz i bet it's a way different yeah. crowd than than playing worship yeah. in a church setting so that's awesome because i i think you still have a focus that when you're writing you might have that audience in mind but you also have the message in mind and i don't know this is this could be me maybe putting words into you or trying to get it out of you but uh, i feel, <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like what i i feel like what i witness it's a little bit of like people here so for example i mean i love this guy and i'm just going to mention him because this is the one that comes to mind right and i still i still think he's incredible i'm not discrediting him at all it's just what what i see happening right um Michael W. Smith. To me, he was an amazing songwriter, like unbelievable songwriter back in the 90s, yeah. even early 20s, 2000s, I mean. And then mm -hmm. uh, lately, I feel like his music has been more like, okay, I'm doing worship because that's what people want to hear. And I think he's lost a little bit of that uh, that that passion to say, can I, can I break my brain a little bit to writing a song <laughs> and including a message? And you know, thinking about a story for the sake of you know, people just want to hear me sing about Jesus, right? So in a sense, mm -hmm. I feel like maybe that's that's the easy route because it you, you have sustainability in in the market, maybe in a exactly. sense. Exactly. Well, th th this is an interesting thing because in the beginning I told you about uh, the technique you need to do songs to write songs. Mm. And the other thing is inspiration. And sometimes uh, us, um, I mean, when I write a, a, a song, uh, I can, in, if I think, in, uh, if, I, if I have a goal, let's say I want to I wanna get to that type of people, I use a technique thinking and that type of people. If, if I want to do worship, I, I use my technique and what I've learned about how to write songs. And... Yeah, and, and and I try I try to get to that to that people with certain type of lyrics, and um, let's say in worship music. But uh, sometimes it's hard to know the to understand the heart of the um, of the composers. And uh, let's say that Michael W. Smith. I'm I'm not saying that he is doing that because of the mainstream in the Christian world, but maybe he's being inspired all these days because because he sees the, the need in people to worship in God. And mm. that is amazing. But I've, I've seen uh, the other day, a guy told me, Hey, you know what? You're going to laugh on this. <laughs> he told me I need to do, I, I need, I need to do more music and worship in music and this and blah, blah, blah. And I asked him, Oh yeah, that's pretty cool that you're starting again. And he said, yeah, I need more money. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's his expression. And I was like, I was shocked because are you saying that because you see an need in people and, um, and get connected with and engaged with God uh, or because you need money. In my case, I'm a canon, so I do accounting. Sometimes it's been hard for me to keep doing music because it's not easy. Well, not really hard because because God is faithful. You know, mm -hmm. he's always there providing. That's amazing. That's another story. But in in my in my case, um, I've been doing accounting always parallel to my music um, world since i was uh, 20 but well when you have a call from god you mm. need to you need you're gonna have to work hard sometimes uh if the situation is is not easy for you economically or in other in other areas so i don't know if i'm like explaining myself because i have a lot of ideas in my mind but <laughs> no that's <laughs> probably good. this could extend yeah. a lot But yeah, it's more motivation. It's um, mm. it's a very important thing in our lives. So if we are motivated, motivated and 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 make that the people connect with God through worship music, 
that's the most uh, beautiful thing. Wow. Yes. Okay. So yeah, you you kind of like, in a sense, taking it back to the, it's a heart issue, right? So it's not about whether you're doing worship or rock music. It's about where is your heart, right? So if your heart is in yes. worship just because you can make money, then maybe you got to check check your heart and your intentions and, and your motives to see why. Yeah, because if, if I want to appeal to certain type of people uh, in the Christian world, in, Sp in Spanish right now, uh, there's a certain type of movement. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to name anything, but uh, where, when, where we already know how to appeal to some type of people, uh, some niche, Mm -hmm. And I can write that type of music pretty easy because pretty easy, it's pretty easy and just doing a bit. And I can probably make a lot of money doing that. But it's not part of my essence. It, essence? Sense? Mm -hmm. well, it's not part of me. So it's, it's, if I'm thinking in strategies, that's amazing. You need to do strategies, marketing strategies, etc. But at the same time, you need to get inspired of what is happening in people's heart. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's so cool. Okay, so I want to learn from you, like being a Latino, being in the United States, almost like what you're saying is you have a calling to music and you're calling from God, like you, you receive that from God and you say, I'm on a mission. This is about the gospel. Mm -hmm. There's an audience that I'm reaching that that really worship won't, right? Like being in front of like Alejandro Sanz fans. I mean, you're reaching an audience, and but also th this idea that you are you you're like paying yourself, right? Like you're you're work you work you have you know that work ethic of like I'm an accountant. This is how I make a living. This is how I support my family. But I also have a calling, and I feel like that's so inspirational, man. I feel like. Uh, Maybe a lot of people Thank have you. to uh -huh. learn from that, and especially here in America, right? But I would love to learn about how there has there like how do people receive what you do here in the U.S. Like living here 20 years, being surrounded by maybe like um, American people around you, and then when they find out, oh, that's what you do. Like you're an accountant, but you're also like you travel the world and you do music and you open for Alejandro Sanz. In Miami, I mean that's pretty <laughs> epic. Like, how do people take that? Like, the the day the day see I don't know. Just like, what, what's your experience? Like, is it relevant? Well, well, yeah, uh, that's interesting because sometimes, and I understand that part when when you talk um, to uh, leaders in churches. Uh, most of I have a lot of uh, friends who are uh, pastors. And sometimes I, I have talked about these type of experiences with them, and yeah, they, they're happy and seeing what, I'm, what God um, has been doing in my life and with my ministry, touching people and more. Uh, at the same time, uh, some people can criticize. Did I say right? Criticize um, that type of um, uh, participations or performances. Um, but this is the reality. The people like you, like me, uh, who is more like um, the audience. This is the reality. The people is listening constantly uh, music, not just Christian music. And and it's amazing thing that people is always always trying to listen to good music with good, good message. So um, when I've been in this type of events, uh, Christian people who I know, they, they are um, glad for me for or what God has been doing in my life. Um, so I have some interviews, uh, or I've been in podcasts like this one in with uh, uh, secular or not Christian uh, uh, shows. And it's amazing how people uh, support me, sending messages, and they know that that type of uh, podcasts or interviews uh, are not Christians, that mm -hmm. the hosts are not Christians. And that's amazing how they try to get involved in the conversations uh, in a very wise way. And, and, and that's, um, I, when I see that, I'm, it's the best thing because you see that the people is not, all, all, it's not just trying to support you. you know, I mean, they try, they've been trying to 
help you and and, and in achieve that goal to engage people with God. So yeah, that's been my experience. In the other hand, when I talk to um, uh, English speaking people, uh, mm, if I have a lot of friends who are not Christian. So when I share with them my experiences traveling the world and doing music, um, it, they get connected with me and they go and look for my music. And it's funny because sometimes there, there's a lot of Rodrigo Silva uh, <laughs> in Spotify and Apple Music, and and sometimes they get confused. Like, hey, I didn't know that you used to sing in in um, Portuguese <laughs> because <laughs> there's a guy from Brazil named Rodrigo Silva too who sings in mm-hmm. Portuguese. <laughs> the other day, uh, a friend uh, told me, hey, I, she's a friend for years. I I know her since I was twenty. I'm forty seven now. And she told me the other day, Rodrigo, I didn't know that that, that you uh, recorded a, 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 how do you say, homenaje? How do you say homenaje? Homage. Um, how, how do you say? Homage. A homage or to Pedro Infante, because there's oh. a guy, Rodrigo Silva, in Colombia who recorded <laughs> who recorded <laughs> a, a Pedro Infante project in honor honoring Pedro Infante, Pedro Infante. And I was laughing, no, that's another, that's another Rodrigo Silva. <laughs> but at the same time, she was like pretty glad supporting me. That's amazing, Rodrigo, that you're not doing, you're, you're not just doing um, a very, uh, <laughs> I mean, Christian music, but you, you're opening to other, uh, other paths in the good way of, of, of this. So yeah, I, I have a lot of pretty good experiences with people. I, I've been feeling always uh, supported by, by, I would say, fans. But, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so what would be um, maybe like the, the hardest thing you've faced being here in, in the United States as a musician? Like what has been like some of the, the struggles maybe like trying to make music, but here in the United States, what have you witnessed or have, has it been pretty pretty easy, pretty stable or have you need to overcome um, any hurdles? The hardest thing is English interviews like this one. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm playing. <laughs> well, honestly, honestly, I, I've been enjoying the ride. I mean, for me, there's no moments where I would say this being hard for me. I mean, I see that type of uh, challenges as that, as challenges, uh, an opportunity for me to grow. So maybe because I have that mentality, I don't feel overwhelmed or stressful under different cir- circumstances. Um, well, before the pandemic, Probably this one, this one was a, a, a kind of stress, stressful uh, thing for me. Before the pandemic, I was traveling, traveling a lot. I was traveling every weekend, like, like 48 or 40 uh, weekends of the year I, I was traveling uh, here in the U.S. Uh, performing, performing or doing concerts or going to churches, to events. And I was very tired. Um, I've been traveling, so my two daughters uh, were are growing, uh, and and when I was traveling, I was I used to think, well, I'm doing this instead of be, being with my family right now. So that was a little mm. bit uh, stressful for me. So when the pandemic started, uh, I know it wasn't a pretty good experience for for most of the world, but for me, it was a moment uh, to rest. Mm. It was a, a break for for what I was doing. So um, once the pandemic finished, uh, finished, mm, there was there was again the opportunity to start uh, traveling. But I said no. I'm gonna I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna I'm gonna be. I'm gonna see. Uh, it was like expecting what would happen next. Um, and now after months uh, that the pandemic uh, finished. Um, we're just uh, uh, trying to start traveling, but in order to answer your question, yeah, the more the most struggling moments were that I was tired uh, traveling a lot since 2014. Of course, I started I started traveling since 2003 or 2005, 
But in those moments with no kids, me and my wife, we were, you know, enjoying and <laughs> uh, all that yeah. type of experiences. But uh, once my daughter started growing up, I was like, oh, man, I need to be spending more to be spending more time with my family. That's a, the most uh, stressful moments for me. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's so good. I love that. And I think, um, yeah, I, I, I talked to my friend. I have a lot of musicians, friends, too. Because kind of like same thing, you know. Maybe you are you're you're on the like successful side of music, uh, especially like Spanish music. Because it's funny. This is kind of like side note, but I came here with America with the dream to make music. But then, really, <laughs> I, I, I think it was hard because it's like okay, I'm doing music in Spanish, but there there wasn't really an audience for that back then, especially you no know, like rock music and indie rock and in Spanish overall, right? When everybody was maybe listening to just like Manao or Caifanes. So it was really hard to break through with with your own songs and stuff like that. But regardless, I feel you, like... But you know what? Yeah. I'm no, sorry. Say, there's a lot of opportunity. Now that you mentioned that, there's a lot of opportunity. Actually, we're we're trying to get into those that type of events or concerts, opening for that type of bands. We're working on that pretty hard uh, with a friend of mine who is... Uh, well, um, a promoter, a promoter here in the U.S. So um, now that you mentioned mentioning that, that's a good opportunity as a musician in Latino. Uh, that if you like rock, uh, because if, uh, that type of bands like La Gusana Ciega, I don't know if you heard about them, yes. like um, Caifanes, yes. <laughs> well, not, not anymore. Yeah, that's weird, right? But a lot of uh, bands um, that are playing in the secular world, um, if there's a niche there, uh, pretty good niche of people here in the U.S. And that's a pretty good opportunity for us, for me, that I want to expose uh, to the people uh, positive music with, uh, the, with the Christian values. That's a good opportunity to get, to get into that type of events and perform. And, and that way they can see the light of, of Jesus. That For me, that's, that's my goal these days. Wow. Yes, I love that. Okay, so I'll, I think I'll stick with that. And so, what do you think? Just, I, I would kind of like start wrapping it up right here, but like, it seems like you have a goal, you have a purpose for your music. Like, you're very uh, focused with giving a message, bringing the gospel, knowing the audience that you're like, you want to be in front of in a sense. Being a Latino in the United States, now there's more Latinos here. It's like you're saying, there's more opportunities to play the type of songs that you do uh, while still offering, like you said, light and hope. So what would you say is the, what made you follow Jesus in that sense? You know, why, why pursue Jesus, but still like want to put it into songs? Like what was it about your life, your own journey that mm -hmm. says, this is so, like Jesus is so compelling. I want to, I want to sing about him, maybe without mentioning his name, but to offer light to other people. Like, what was compelling about him? Yeah, well, I mentioned, to start, I mentioned uh, Jesus' name in my songs, but let, let's say 10%, 20%. I don't want, it's not that I'm trying to hide his name, because his name is over all names. But, yeah, as Mm, as a composer doing art, for me, sometimes you need to let the people discover what is behind the lyrics. And the people is pretty smart to do that. So how I started, um, in other words, how, how I started, since I was a child, I, I was um, uh, pretty exposed to music because my family from my mom's side, uh, in, in my mom's my mom's uh, side family there's a lot of musicians my grandpa was a pretty good musician and and uh, when at the same time in my childhood i experienced experienced different things in my life um, my happy moment mo moments happy moments uh, my stress stressful moments and in but as, at the same time i was a kid like a very talented kid, not anymore, but <laughs> 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 those days. I, was, <laughs> I remember that at school, always uh, the teachers um, uh, 
used to make me participate in, in musical events because I used to sing a lot. But when I, it, when I was at home, there, we had pretty happy moments, moments um, because we used to go uh, visit my family in the south of Mexico. Not south, I mean in Sinaloa. They're from Sinaloa. And I, I have pretty good memories of my family. And as we said in the beginning, I'm original from Nogales. And it's, it's in, I grew up there. So it's, Nogales is a small city in the border with, with the U.S., with Arizona. And I was exposed, expo exposed to a mix of cultures. And, but um, with all these um, elements on the table, I was experiencing also... Uh, a lot of domestic violence at home because my, my father and my dad basically was an alcoholic. So every day or every other day, he used to come home uh, drunk. So always we experienced a lot of, of, of uh, domestic violence because of that. He used to hit my mom and you know what? There's a lot of bad memories of that. But when I when I when I got to my teenage days, when I uh, um, started in high school, I remember I met a, a boy who told me, you know what, I, uh, I'm going to, I'm part of this Christian uh, church. And we, when he said that, I told him, you know what, I, I, I want to go with you to the church. And when I, my first time in that church, I was amazed because I, I felt the presence of God there. It was real. So I remember saying, asking God if, uh, because th there was a pastor saying about the, rea the, the reality of God. And I asked God if what this guy is saying about you, um, if for real, you are real, I want you to do these changes in my home, in my house. Um, and the first thing I asked God was, please, um, I want a miracle. I don't want my dad drinking anymore. And I was amazing after that because since that moment, my dad never drunk, uh, drunk again, never got drunk again. Oh, home. Wow. So, yeah, so the thing started changing. But there's more. You know what? When my wife uh, met you for the first time when I was 15, uh, she's my wife, Gladys, since, since then. Uh, I, I met her when, when we were uh, 15. We was in a concert, by the way. We were in the in a concert, a secular concert, <laughs> and she said she used to say that uh, in those days, of every one hundred words I, I, I was mentioning, only one was normal because I used to say a lot of bad words and I was very different, and and but when I had that experience at church, when I saw the God's reality. Everything changed in me. I mean, in my house, things started uh, changing also. Uh, and then since that moment, I, I started uh, uh, at church and I never stopped. I started playing drums when I was 17. And when I was, when I was 19, uh, I started uh, at the worship team um, as a worship leader. And as I said before, I started writing songs. And I was, I started writing signs of my own life, my experiences, how God transformed my life. That's why I've been sharing that type of lyrics, that type of music since then, because I had that experience. I know, I know what that means when you're struggling in life, when there's no hope for you, when you're in darkness, and repentantly God uh, does something for you, and you see the light, the life of the Lord. Wow, fire right there, man, Rodrigo. That's that's so profound, and I think I just want to give you my takeaway, and then we're gonna go to our emojis to to finalize the episode. <laughs> but I think my takeaway is is along the lines of like God can transform people, and in this case, it's almost like I think there's a verse in the Bible that's something that the la oración del justo puede mucho, you know, the 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 mm -hmm. prayer of the righteous man can can do a lot <laughs> no for lack of better translation yep. but uh I, I think god honored that right when you prayed and things started you no know, god started moving in your family that's amazing but not only that i mean to see that years and years later here you are writing songs 
uh, that are about that light and God is putting you in front of an audience that it's probably not your typical church audience, right? And maybe mostly Latino Sorry. because you're you're you know, you're building on your experience and who you are and you know you're from Nogales, Mexico. So God is utilizing that to put you in front of people to bring his light. And that's so awesome. I think, you know, I, I think that's my takeaway. And as we go to our emojis, I want you to think about the next generation. And I love that you have daughters who are, you know, around that young age, 10, 13. My kids are also like, you know, 13, 11, seven years old. And I think for a lot of them, you know, maybe, maybe they're still to experience God moving their lives and maybe hear that calling to what God can do with their talents and, and things like that. So I would say as we go to the emojis, like focus on the next generation, focus on your kids, on my kids, on yeah. what your answers would be. Okay. So we're going to start Absolutely, off yeah. with, I think it's the blasphemous. Oh yeah. <laughs> blasphemous emoji. So Rodrigo Silva, okay. not not the Portuguese and not the Colombian Rodrigo <laughs> Silva, the one <laughs> the one in Tucson, Arizona. What is the worst idea that you can think of in the in the pursuit of God's call in your life? Even maybe like the music journey. What would be the worst idea, the most blasphemous that you can think of? That I can think right now as a society in the world, right? Yeah, whatever. Just uh, uh, think of your kids. What would you tell them? Avoid this. This is bad. This is the worst. Well, it's interesting because for me, it's like a blasphemy these days. Always has been this happening, but using God's name to manipulate people's will. Uh, I mean, politically, religiously. So for me, that's like a blasphemy. So, and sometimes us, when uh, as musicians, we are in, who are in the music industry, we get involved in in that game. So yeah, blasphemy for me is manipulating uh, people's will. Wow. Skeptical emoji. So <laughs> what would you tell people? Like, be careful with this, you know, like skepticism, <laughs> like almost like I question this. Hmm. Exactly. You that face, About, that face you just did. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's what I did. <laughs> well, I see, I see like a forced skepticism. This is, that's interesting because this is because it's more convenient for me not to believe. I mean, it's, it's, it's a forced skepticism because sometimes I talk with people saying, yeah, I want to get close to God, but mm, I'm not sure. It's because it's more comfortable for them to be for uh, being living that way. I They say, I prefer not to live because it's more comfortable and enjoyable to live um, uh, as I please. We have, uh, in that way, it's like, we have lost respect for God. Mm. So people have some, um, people have become skeptical also due to institutionalism. Sometimes the people say, no, nope, I don't want to be part of that thing because it's weird. <laughs> religion that claims, I mean, the religion that, that claims not to be a religion, you know? Uh. And on the other hand, there, there are many uh, elements involved in this in order to um, make the people feel skeptical, like the political matters. Uh, people associate uh, being a believer with these days with, with being part of a political party. And that um, discredits the path of faith. Mm. So good. Inspired emoji. So <laughs> where, where, what gives you hope? What inspires you? Okay. Or where do you want to point people to see inspiration? You know what? I'm very inspired when I uh, when I see my daughters sharing my uh, their dreams with me. When they say, you know, 
well that I want to do this. I want to achieve this goal, these goals in my life. Uh, I want to do music. I want to do, you know, when, when you're a kid, you think in different things, but that inspires, that, that inspires me a lot, a lot. I'm, I'm also inspired when I see the people with humble hearts. Um, I know I'm not got to see people's heart, but you can, you can feel, you can, mm. you can notice when, when people is humble in, in their hearts. And I'm, I, I, I also in, uh, get inspired by, you're going to say how cursi, how, how, I don't know how to say in English. Cheesy. So, so how, <laughs> uh, how cheesy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm inspired by, by the sunsets <laughs> that, nice. that bring me peace to myself. I love to go walking every, every sunset, every, every evening, walking with my head a little dog, which is very, <laughs> she barks a lot. <laughs> but yeah, I, I I get inspired for all those those type of things. But mainly when I see my daughters sharing me their dreams because it's part of God's plan. And dreaming, I mean, like like Joseph in the Bible. Mm, so good. Holy. So, what's a holy <laughs> idea according to Rodrigo? Silva. Oh man, I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, holy holiness. You know what? For me, holiness is transformation. Mm. It's transformation because, and to become better, it's necessary to change. That's what happened to my life. I was sharing with you about my childhood, how it changed. So, in change for for the better, because sometimes sometimes people change not necessarily for the better so to distance ourselves from spiritually spiritual mediocrity if i can say that way to distance ourselves from selfishness it's necessary to be uh, born a new uh, or rebirth each day so i was i think i was saying that concept to you yesterday and um, in the spanish um, podcast that is necessary to be reborn to be transformed every day so some some I remember I heard a guy, I don't remember who, who was him, that says, um, let me try to translate it in my, man, in my <laughs> mind. He said, the best evidence of a new birth in the Christian uh, life is not only re repeating a prayer, but a transformed life. Mm. So for me, holding it is transformation. And that's part, part of my goal with my music, sharing uh, with people my experiences, my life, uh, so that way they can change their life too. Love it. And lastly, the divine <laughs> emoji, the highest idea Rodrigo Silva can think of. Divine from divinity, right? <laughs> <laughs> because you know, there's constantly concepts behind that word. Well, Thing of divinity, like for me, it's like thinking, uh, it's like a symphony playing a beautiful sound that touches uh, your emotions. Mm. It's like, like a guide that persuades us to, to walk the right path in life. And, and you know what? It's, it's just like uh, the sound when it gives you light uh, every day, bring in that, that light brings you clarity when you don't see because it's dark so is, is that the same way that how god uh, works in our life so um and the other concept of for me of, uh, about divinity is love and and now um for me the the most divine and profound concept in life is definitely love and the and god is love so we should look for that divine source, for that uh, source of divine uh, in, of love every day and stay connected with it. So in other words, um, we need to be connected with God. So, yeah. <laughs> I made it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Yes, sir. We made it through the five emojis. My friends, amigos, 
from Costa Mesa, California. My name is Beto Gudiño. And <laughs> Rodrigo, where can people find your stuff? Like, do you want them to go to your website? And you said the song is in English or Spanish, The Resilientes. I have two versions, one in Spanish okay. and the other one is in English. Okay. Resilientes in Spanish, resilient in English. So you can find it in every uh, streaming platform like Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, uh, Deezer, etc. And Rodrigo Silva, the guy with this face, not the guy from <laughs> other, the guys from other countries. <laughs> yeah, the original. You can find me also. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can find me also. Find me um, in Facebook as Rodrigo Silva Music, uh, Twitter Rod Silva Music. Let me. There's a lot of options. Uh, what's the other one? Instagram Threads. Rodrigo Silva Band. Yes. Huh? Threads. Twitter. Oh, thread, not... Twitter. Yes. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. I forgot that part. I forgot that part. <laughs> TikTok. In TikTok is Rodrigo Silva Music too. YouTube Rodrigo Silva Music. So yeah, I hope. You can find me there and, and you like my music. Awesome. We do like it. All right. Let's see you guys on the next one. <laughs> and I want to say, if you like this episode, please like, subscribe, share it with a friend. Visit us at christianpodcast.com. Like I said, we have the Spanish stream where we did an interview, my wife and me, with Rodrigo Silva, completely in Spanish. It's awesome. So check it out on our website. But please... Give us a five-star review only. If it's not five-star, don't even give us a review. Move on to the next podcast. Okay, go go listen to something else. Ah, well, thank you for being here. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you.